This is Wholesaling Houses Elite, the no fluff and BS podcast with tips and tricks to help you become an elite wholesaler. Our guest will spill the beans on what it takes to be the best. This podcast is brought to you by Lead Gen Pros, making it incredibly easy for the average real estate investor and business owner to get more leads. They work with a variety of companies who specialize in real estate investing and who are looking for a systemized way to increase their lead flow and grow their business. If that sounds like you, check out theleadgenpros.com. Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome to Mindset Mondays. This is something that I really haven't done before. I may have teased it in a video or two, but this is an idea that Dave and I have been kicking around, and I'm more than happy to make this happen. Mindset Mondays is basically about the mind. I want to bring in other people, leaders, other uh, business people, people that are, are in the community and find out what's the difference between their mindset and other people's mindset, successful people and unsuccessful people. So sitting in front of me today is somebody I consider a friend and also a mentor and happens recently is now the sheriff of the county I live in, uh, Mr. Bobby Kimber. How you doing, sir? I'm good. I'm glad to be here with you, Max. So this is crazy. So obviously you've been able to see my growth and been able to see how you know I've excelled over the years and um, what I'm thinking is, you know, you looking from the outside in, you being a mentor of mine, what do you think, what, this topic is about mentor, like, like not mentorship, but mindset. Mm -hmm. But before we get into mindset, I, I want people to kind of understand why I picked you and why you're here, why you're somebody that is in my circle, right? Because I talk a lot about, in, in through all my videos, like your circle is important, very, very important. Very so important. most of everybody I hang around besides uh, Ish, Derek and Dave and my brother is pretty much my, you know, older. Most people I hang around are older. They're more experienced. You've been through some things and it's on purpose because you guys have that wisdom that you're, you're years ahead of me that you've picked up and just seen more than I have. Um, so I hang around people that are successful in their own right, and I consider you successful in your own right. So right now, you're our, you're the sheriff of the county I live in. But I'm not really here to talk to you in the capacity of Sheriff Kimbrough. I'm here to talk to you as Bobby Kimbrough, my friend, my mentor. And let's talk about kind of how you got to that point and where you are now. So kind of tell a little bit background of your story. First of all, let me tell you, you know, that I'm very proud of you, of your success and how I've Thank seen you, you grow and how the different uh, transitions and perseverance that I've seen you strive through. But I arrived here not by chance, but by direction. Mm -hmm. You know, I always give thanks to something greater than myself. I always give thanks to a higher call. I always give thanks to God how I arrived here. But I've arrived here being a product of the county that you live in. Uh, mm -hmm. I grew up here. Uh, I started my career early in life uh, working. I worked at Kmart as a young boy. Which Kmart? The one? Or the one? You know, it's amazing you say it was Kmart, but years ago there was a Kmart on Peters Creek Park where it's no longer there. I remember. It's, it's now, actually Gabe's. Okay, it's okay, actually Gabe's okay, now. I remember. Well, was a young boy. I was the cold 39 there. I mean, I cleaned the bathroom, hung the stock up, and yeah. a lot of other things. And I saw men and women come in the store, and I said, you know what? I don't want to spend my life in this same place. I don't. Mm -hmm. I remember sitting in the park watching airplanes leave Smith Reynolds, and I said to myself, gosh, I'd like to get on a plane, see what's on the other side of the world, other side of the county. But I realized that I couldn't get there from where I was at. Yeah, I couldn't spend my life sitting there. And so I started doing some things different. I changed my circle of friends. I went back to school. I finished school. Then I got a job. I started working with the local police department. Uh, then went back to school again. And, and things kept uh, elevating. Yeah. And then I, I spent 20 plus years as a special agent with the federal government. Then I retired uh, in 2016. And I started doing some consultant work, uh, writing, and uh, just doing some uh, speaking. And well, now, I realized that here I am. Boy, selfishly, I, like, I need to slow down because you breeze over that 20 years real quickly. I do. I know it's for a reason, but, <laughs> you know, growing up, I always wanted to be an FBI, CIA agent, right? right. That was, like, my thing. I want to be, be a cop, but I want to be more than I want to be, like, a special cop. 
Right. So for you to grow up in the ranks from the local uh, local police here all the way to being, was that your aspirations? That you, Was it a vision on your vision board? It actually it? was. You know, as a little boy, I was fascinated by Jim West, the original Jim West with Artemis Gord and Dr. Lovers. I was fascinated by... I, well, you got to slow down because I have no idea who Jim West is. See, you talking about Kanye West? Or? No, 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 no. I'm talking about <laughs> Jim West. So, you know, I was fascinated by this white guy riding around a train, well-dressed, mm -hmm. uh, always winning. Uh, with a partner, uh, Artemis Gordon, and chasing a guy named Dr. Loveless. I was fascinated by mm -hmm. that. And I said, you know what, one day I want to be a special agent. I want to be an agent like Jim West. Mm -hmm. You know, and my, my auntie taught me the, 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 the power of dreaming, the power of hope, the power of managing your mind. And, you know, I, I saw her do some things that, that really amazed me. And I believed in hope. I believed in claiming things. Mm -hmm. There's power in the tongue. But, but like, okay, let me let me just stare. So we're in a small town of 350,000 people or so, it's county. Right. Right? So wh how does somebody from a small county, 350, and it was smaller then, mm -hmm. 350,000 people say, I'm going to be a special agent with that? Because that's a big gap. Because in, 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 in any county like this one, a smaller county, you're saying, I just want to be, I want to be, you know, I want to be a top cop. I wanna, See? See, you know, I, I say this, and I, I've always told you this uh, ever since I've known you, is you tell me what you see, how you see yourself, and I'll tell you what you'll be. Mm -hmm. I'll tell me what you've been exposed to, and I'll tell you what your level is. Mm -hmm. Tell me your capabilities, and I'll tell you your possibilities. What I'm saying is that, first of all, you got to see yourself already there. you got to see yourself, no matter what small town, big town, you, know, you have to see yourself mm -hmm. at the place you want to arrive at. And then once you see yourself there, you got to start making plans. you got to say, how do I make myself capable for these possibilities? Yeah. So was it something where you like you wrote down your goals or are you are you do you write down your goals? Do you create a vision board? How do you go from local police and branch up? Did you know did you know the requirements? What what was you playing the long game the whole time? Well, see, you know, things now that that we have uh access to now. I didn't have access. True. I knew like nothing about a vision board. There was no internet when I was growing up. So these are things that I had in the back of my mind, my dreams that I never released, mm -hmm. you know. And then when I got older and I understand and understood how the mind works, the power of the mind, the mm -hmm. power of the vision board. Crazy. Crazy. The power of mindset and the power of mindset management. Then I realized that things are a lot easier than they appear to be. It is. And it's, it's and a lot of people don't really believe in like just writing your goals down and creating a vision board for you don't know what a vision board is it's simply things where what you want to obtain or, or places you want to go you either write it down or take clippings and cut things out print it out and you see it every day and it's it's something magical that works with the mind that when you see something every day for example i knew where i wanted to be financially every every day so i created it i changed i changed everything like even back then i changed my passwords to things to that goal, mm -hmm. right? And that, and just because right. it was something I did every, I, all my passwords were were changed to a certain goal that I had back in the day, and then that it just happened. And those are things I just surrounded myself and 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 you got to put in the action. I'm just saying you think of it and it happens, but you get to be a special agent. I mean, that's a lot of people, a lot of kids look up to be that, and you work for the Department of Justice, DEA, or something like that. So you're you're there. You retire, right? That's it. You're done now. You can cruise the streets. I could. But you decided that you you got another calling and you wanted to do something else. And that's how you became the sheriff. But there goes a whole other mindset. Because right. remember, that's what we're talking about. How do you say, all right, I'm going to go be, I'm going to go run for sheriff of a town. I've never been to had a black sheriff ever. Not that that's a big thing. I mean, it is a big thing. But I, this, you know, the previous sheriff was there for a long time. Well, you you know, when you talk about mindset... Mindset is the key to everything. Yeah. The internet began off of a mindset. Somebody had True. to think of how to put an internet. How do we transfer information and make it that much accessible? Mm -hmm. So mindset is the key to everything. The mindset controls what you wear. Your mindset controls what you want to drive, what you're attracted to, mm -hmm. what you want to eat. The mind is very, very powerful. The mind is an, we still have not tapped into the power of mindset. I think that's crazy. We have not. Any, any scientist... Any neurologist will tell you. I mean, I've experienced seeing what the mindset will do. Mm. I've been in real life situations and seen what mindset will do. Your mind can will you to give up. Your mm. mind can will you to live. 
your mind can will you to succeed. How do you, I mean, so just take different adversity, like different okay. from like life. When you were going through certain trainings to become a special agent, I'm sure there were things and days where you wanted to give up. Mm -hmm. How does one, and that, that translate to life. Of course. Right. So like there's people that want to there's people that give up every day. I think you were high, you and I were having a conversation where the other day there was there's really four places you can be in life. Exactly. And three are talked about every day. Exactly. And the fourth one is not talked about. Of course. So explain when you were talking to me. What were, what were you meaning by that? Well, as I was saying to you that in life, you know, you have three kind of people. Those that are going into a midnight. Midnight being a metaphor for difficult times. Mm -hmm. The second kind is those that are currently in a situation. The third kind is those that are coming out of a situation. The fourth kind is those that never make it out of a situation. They, they take their lives, they give up. And that comes to mindset management. That comes to your mindset. Because see, the mindset, when you find yourself in a difficult situation, it's a different mindset that's gonna free you from it. In other words, when people get in difficult times in their life, that difficult times, their mindset change and the, mind, and the difficult times kind of wilt them down to where they give up versus the mindset that I will win. You got to see yourself beyond the difficult place that you're actually in. You, it's a must. You know, I look at my own life. I, I talk to you, and you you know this firsthand. Uh, I lost my wife 14 years ago in mm -hmm. 2005, June the 6th. And um, I was left to raise my boys mm -hmm. on my own. It was a difficult time. You know, yeah. financially it was difficult. It was financial from a psychological, physiological. It was a difficult time, period. And there was a time when I wanted to give up. And what kept me from giving up, literally giving up to where I wanted to check out of here. Mm -hmm. What 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 kept me from giving up was my children. You know, we talk about this thing, why? You know, people say, well, what is this why? What is your why, right? Mm -hmm. The key is your why has to be love. Love will sustain the difficult times. And my why was love. Why will I not give up? Because I love my kids and I refuse to give up. Why do I go get it every day like I do? Because I love doing what I do. If love is absent from your your blueprint to success, mm -hmm. the odds of you succeeding won't win. I've seen you go hard. You go because you love giving. You love making a difference. Mm -hmm. Love has to be a part of your mindset. Whatever you're trying to accomplish, you got to love it in order to accomplish it. Because it gets rough. Oh, it's rough is an understatement. <laughs> yeah. Rough is an understatement. You, you've been around the country. You've been around this world, actually, uh, through your jobs and just through travel. You've been around pretty successful people. I have. What do you see as probably the most different? What is the big difference between unsuccessful people in this world and successful people? Mindset, bottom line. You think about it. You are a very successful man. You didn't attend an Ivy League school. You didn't come up uh, in what we call traditional settings. Mm -hmm. And look at you now. Mindset. You know, I, I sit and I talk to men and women, young boys and young girls every day. Mm -hmm. uh, and the thing of it is that this, those that are succeeding believe they could succeed. You know, we had a conversation the other day. We talked about uh, the mile run. We talked about yeah. the mile, right? The world record for the mile years ago was like six minutes or something. Mm -hmm. Well, the distance of the mile has not changed, Never but changed. the world record now is three minutes and 52 seconds. And I've talked to people who have broken records, broken world records and certain things, and all of them have the same common denominator is that I knew I could do it, mindset. In other words, if you think about a, a top-notch athlete, talk to one and they will tell you that there are some days when you click and where you can't be stopped. They will tell you about how the mindset determines how hard I go, how hard I play. You wake up some mornings and you feel like you can conquer the world. That means you have all the endorphins kicking. You have everything in your body on fire. You're booming. Yeah. And then what happens is, is you have to really study this thing and understand. Because you talk about atmosphere. Everything, every place that you go in life is set up for an atmosphere, for something to take place in the atmosphere. If you go to a church, it's set up for worship. If you go to the synagogue, you go to the mosque, it's set up for worship. If you go to a restaurant, depending on what restaurant, it's set up for a certain thing. If you go to a five-star restaurant dining place, it, the ambiance is set up for five-star dining the versus you go to a, a fast food restaurant. The atmosphere sets what's to take place in there. If you were to go to the Ritz Carlton versus going to the Motel 6, mm -hmm. the atmosphere is different. And what happens is when you create an atmosphere, 
it affects mindset. And once you affect mindset, you affect outcome. And once you affect outcome, you've changed outcome. And now you have what is known as a chain reaction. You take a young man or a young boy or a young girl, forget what, the, what their gender may be, and you change their behavior. Like, for example, we have this thing in my house with my boys. We call this thing about reinventing yourself every day. Mm-hmm. Every day, reinvent yourself. Give yourself five minutes at night and five minutes in the morning where you spend time alone, alone, whether it's in the bathroom, whether it's in the closet. And you think about what you did that day. How could you make yourself better? Mm -hmm. Then you take it and say, okay, now how do I make tomorrow better? Right? And then what happens in the morning, you give yourself five minutes before you begin your day. You talk about how you're going to set forth a managing your day, the mindset you're going to manage your day with, how you're going to change people that you meet. Hello, how are you doing? You know, you, you're going you're to insert yourself intentionally in the life. See, most of people go through life just existing, and some people actually live this life. Yeah. Mindset, mindset management. And I, I concur to that. Uh, some of the very successful people that I hang around is, is they just think there's really no impossible thing to them. They do, everything is talked about in a different quantity and a different light. Like it doesn't, it, I don't, I, there's no limitation other than do they want to or do not want to do it. My grandmother's 96, Max, right? Mm-hmm. I talk to her about the internet sometime. I go visit her. She's 96, still has a uh, sharp very mind. sharp, sharp yeah. mind. And she still is fascinated by the internet. She's fascinated by the iPhone. How can I be talking to someone and looking at them at FaceTime? The time. She's fascinated by that, mm-hmm. right? So you think about in my life, I'm a lot older than you, but you think about in my life, there was no internet. There well, was no I, cell phone. I remember pre-internet, pre-cell phone. Okay. See, now people couldn't live without a cell phone. Well, not really pre-cell phone. I remember where, like if, I remember growing up that if you had a phone, a cell phone, you were rich. Exactly. Like you, <laughs> not The bag every, phone. You yeah, the bag yeah. phone. Nobody yeah. had, not everybody had, and then, and then it slowly became available. I, you know, it's really in the last 10 to 12 years maybe 15, that, that's changed rapidly. That's true. I mean, you, you think about iPhone came out 2007, 2008. Before then, we had Stylus and Blackberries. I'm, no, I'm sure you had them traveling internationally and stuff like that. There was no cell phone in 1975. No. That, I think the cell phone was invented in 1984 by Motorola. Exactly. And so that was the bag phone. That was the first phone they ever Exactly. Had. So, yeah, I, I think some change rapidly. But, you know, I just think that for us, I think one thing that I always see when when people talk about business and the how to be successful and the steps, the ABC, because I in, in my field, real estate, I mm-hmm. can teach people how to be millionaires tomorrow. Right. I can give you the blueprint on how to be a millionaire and how to create financial independence through real estate. But the problem is most people don't have the mindset to receive that information. That's a fact. I mean, for example, you cannot put, you know, back in the days when you used to burn, when I used to burn CDs and sell them in high school, you can't put 45 songs on a 60 minute CD. It just don't work. And that's kind of how your mind is a 60 minute CD. As a young, not wealthy, not successful person, you are a 60 minute CD. And the people that are successful have double and triple disc CDs. And they can just see things in, in a different light and different everything. I, I mean, even now, I would say when I walk around, I always look at the business opportunity of everything. Mm-hmm. It's just how my mind's programmed. I'm going out to eat, and I'm like, mm, I know this costs this, and we pay this. Man, that margin's crazy. Like, you know, I just calculate things like that. And I think that, I think that once you fall in love with something, and it doesn't have to be real estate, it doesn't even have to be entrepreneurship, it can actually be you being the best employee ever working for somebody. Not everybody has entrepreneurship goals, but you can rise to the top. Remember, even most CEOs are just employees. Without question. They just rose to the top of of their cream. So mindset, I do concur 100% mindset is is it. Um, If you had to, and you do talk to young people every day through some of your nonprofit stuff you do and being in the position you are a share, what do you say to somebody that 
you know, because one thing is is uh, in the African American community, mental illness is not talked about a lot, mm -hmm. right? And I think a lot of it leads from. I think there's a lot of, uh, you know, what do you what do you call that? Uh, I'm my mind skipping, but what what do you call when you leave the military? I'm sorry, uh, PSD. Right. I think there's a lot PTSD. Right. There's a lot of that in the communities. Right. That is not diagnosed, mm -hmm. and then some people end up living that fourth that fourth part of it where they take their life or they give up. Right. And you see it. You see you've seen it because you travel the world, the right. jobs that you have, and now you're in a position where anything that happens in this community, you hear about it right. on your desk in the morning. Right. You hear about people giving up and mm -hmm. you see people give up. You have them, they're they're in the jail. They give up. What do you tell somebody that is facing adversity? And and it all it looks different, right? It can be somebody that's going to work every day, they're happy, or they they, they appear to be happy, but they're really not. You know, I think one of the worst things is going to work every day and you hate it. But what do you say to somebody that is going through the struggle that don't have the courage to talk to somebody that needs to change their mindset? How do they get out of that? How do they bring themselves because they're not ready to divulge that? How do they bring, how do they come out of that? See, there's two, there's a lot of thoughts running through my head right now. You yeah. know, you touched on a lot of things. One thing that I would tell you is that the side of you that you feed the most, it's the side of you that becomes dominant. Mm -hmm. In other words, if you feed yourself positiveness, if you feed yourself good food for thought, that's the side of you that becomes dominant. Mm -hmm. If you feed yourself tomfoolery and foolishness, <laughs> that's the side of you that becomes dominant. Now what I tell young men and young girls, my sons are uh, your age and younger, what I tell them is this, is that adversity will find you regardless of who you are. True. You could be rich, you could be broke. Adversity and difficult times will find you. Mm -hmm. What happens is, how do you handle that? Because stress affects all of us differently. Stress affects you differently, me differently. Uh, it affects us differently. But here's the thing that you have to realize is that there is nothing wrong with saying, I need help. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with saying, hey, talk to me. There's nothing wrong with saying, what can I do to better myself? We as those that have arrived, so to speak, because you know, life is organic, it's constantly growing, you're constantly reinventing yourself. You've got to go back and give back. The things that you do when you go back and you mentor and you, you, you bring people to places they've never been before and you help them achieve their goals and their dreams, we've got to have more of that for more people. Mm -hmm. Because what happens is, when you find someone and life has beaten you down and where you can't make ends meet. You don't have the funding you need. You start to see yourself, your self-esteem starts to leave you. You know, when you get to be a certain place and you can't even afford to go out to eat, you can't even afford to purchase a car, you can't even afford to do basic life living. Mm -hmm. It starts to affect you. It starts to affect your psychological being. It starts to affect your physiological being. You know, I, I tell the story about, you know, after losing a wife, how my self-esteem left me. I went from eating where I wanted to eat to eating off the dollar menu at McDonald's we and Taco Bell. Yeah. I, I went to having an ulcer because I was having to eat what I could in terms of um, not healthy because my kids were my first concern. And I probably could have went to my parents and said, hey, mom, dad, um, I need help. But as men, we've been taught that you don't cry in public. Mm -hmm. You don't reach out for help, especially in the African American community. You know that pride thing, and then especially in the military, and then exactly. especially in the exactly. services you were in. Right. You don't. You don't let people see your weaknesses, because you know once don't they show emotions. you don't show emotions. You don't show your weaknesses, and what happens is we lose so many people by that. doing that. You know, I, I heard a story. Um, guy decided he was going to jump off the bridge. He left home walking, and um, he jumped off the bridge, took his life. And they went back to his house and, you know, they was getting his things and moving out. And uh, his family found the note that he had left. And the note said that, I'm leaving here to take my life. If you find this note, I was successful. But if somebody just speaks to me and says hello and asks me how I'm doing, I'm going to stop. I'm gonna stop and you won't find this note. In other words, sometimes people are wanting you to ask them, how are you doing? Mm -hmm. And be sincere and genuine about it. You know, Everybody must have a cut doctor. 
you know, if you go back to boxing, let's look at it from a boxing boxing perspective. Ali had a guy named Dundee. Dundee was his cheerleader. You know, rope a dope dope, float like a butterfly, sting like a deer. Ah, rumble, young man, rumble. That was Ali's cheerleader, right? But he also had a cut doctor. Because sometimes in life, you're going to get cut. You in other words, cut. you're going to get cut. And you got to have somebody that can you can talk to that you know you can confide in. There's no you cut that ain't going to talk about you being cut and help you through that that, that period of that, 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 that minor injury. You know, how you and I talk and we share things, how mm -hmm. you've come to me and I've come to you, and we can talk and know that it stays right there. You've got to have a cut doctor. Yep. Your, your, your road to success is determined by who's on that road with you. 100%. That's why your circle of friends is so important because you're going to have people that's on the road to success with you. They're on the road to success with you because you're their ticket out. And another thing that when you talk about circle is that's part of your mindset change. It's Without changing question. who you are around. Like you said, who you feed. We talk about physical fitness all the time, what you eat physically and 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 when you go to the gym the mind is a whole nother muscle that never gets worked out by a lot of people uh you talk about changing things i used to first thing i, lo I love the news i used to i used to love the news i used to love sports first thing every morning while i was taking a shower i used to listen to cnn exactly one of the worst things you can ever do as a human is wake up in the morning and fill your brain with crap so I changed that from that to now where I was for two, three years, I was listening to Gary V. We talked about the right. guy that I had to speak at my event. And that changed just my, it just made me fresher in the morning. Mm -hmm. I didn't listen to rap music with lyrics that had things that just, you subconsciously absorb it because you're around it. Like if you hang around somebody that smokes, you're going to smell like a cigarette. Bottom line. So I had to stop hanging around people that smoked, not not literally, but smoke for me was CNN and, and, and the music that was not influencing me to go into listening to motivational people with things that thought, thought different. And then it slowly changed who I hung around. I started fi finding myself hanging around people that wanted to succeed, attorneys, other business people, people that had things to lose. And all of a sudden, I became what I was around. My mind absorbed it. I started feeding my mind and exercising it. Um, one way you, you, I know you exercise your mind is you, you like to read. Mm -hmm. um, and actually, I know you're not here to talk about this, but one of my favorite books is actually a book you wrote called Beyond Midnight. And you reference midnight as getting beyond the difficult time, right? So for you listening to this, check out that book. Um, it's a Kindle version that I have. And it's, it's crazy because I actually do. I only really listen to audio books, but because we're friends, I read it. And I've ended up reading it a couple times, reading it a couple times. So um, Beyond beyond Midnight, go check that out. It's on Amazon. But what type of what books, before we wrap this up, what's, what type of books or what people do you listen to? Or how do you feed your mind at this well, position you're at, in at now? At the position I'm in now, I read a lot of uh, leadership books. Mm -hmm. uh, I would suggest everybody go read The Art of War. Mm -hmm. uh, the Art of War, a very good book. It talks about how you address situation, how you position yourself in mindset. But to remember this, a couple key things, you know, is that the side of you that you feed the most, society becomes dominant. My son uh, had a C average and C plus average. Mm -hmm. He wanted an iPhone. I told him he wouldn't get the iPhone unless he brought that C plus up to a B. I said, but I'm going to help you bring it up to a B. He said, how is that, Dad? You going to school with me? I said, nope, I'm not going to school with you. I'm, I'm, are you going to do my homework? Nope. You going to get me a tutor? Nope. I'm going to show you just one little trick of mindset and how your mindset affects the atmosphere and how it affects people. I said, here we go. Every morning I want you to go in this classroom and you say good morning to your teacher. Good morning, Miss Smith. When you leave, say, Miss Smith, have a great day. On Friday, say, Miss Smith, have a great weekend. On Monday morning, come back and say, Miss Smith, did you have a great weekend? Because now you're engaging Miss Smith, mm -hmm. right? So now Miss Smith and you have a different rapport because now Miss Smith don't see you as a C student, C plus student. She see you as a C plus student who's a wonderful student, has a wonderful personality. So now when the grading period comes, you a C plus. She start rounding up. She rounded up. You just became a B student. And Without doing really, C plus work. In other reason. words, what happens is how I see you will determine how I treat you. And how I see you and treat you will determine what I will do for you and what I will do 
to help or hinder you. So the first thing you got to realize when you talk about mindset management is how do I see myself, first of all, and how does the world see me? You know, we say, well, I don't care how the world sees you. Unless you are Max Maxwell or multimillionaire, you need to be careful because if you go somewhere and you need an assistance of somebody else, people are sizing you up before they hear you. They size me up every day. Every day. Every day. Every day. And that's just who we are. When you see a beautiful woman, you're looking at her. If you see a beautiful man, you're looking at him. You see a beautiful car, you're admiring it. That's just who we are as human beings. You may not speak on it, but your mind saw it and it registered. And those are the things that when we talk about mindset and management, you've got to manage your mind because the mind is so powerful. It'll run rampant. It'll drive you all over this world. And now with the invent of the Internet, the Internet can occupy you all day long mm -hmm. and you never leave the house You've never any, done anything to grow yourself and to grow uh, or ascend to where you're trying to get yeah. in life. Yeah, 100%. Change that atmosphere. You got to. Change, change that mind. Change the atmosphere. Change the outcome. Look, I, ha I enjoyed this. This is the first one. This is going to be the first of many. Oh, I've enjoyed and this. And maybe we have you back um, again when we talk about some other things. I know you have... I know you newly elected sheriff, but I know you, you, we always talked about some of your entrepreneurial aspirations prior to you running for uh, sheriff and winning. And uh, I'd love to bring you back on to talk. I appreciate and, it. And, I and love I what you're and, doing. And I challenge you. You know a lot of people now. Yeah. Bring them to me because I want to have different people from different walks of life on this show so that the audience can really see where other people come from for these Mindset Mondays because it, it's mindset. We got to change your mind. And, it, and it's good it's on Monday because it's the beginning of the week. Exactly. Right? And it prepares you to have that the mindset to absorb the rest of the week. That's it. So I appreciate you being a appreciate part of the first you. one. And, appreciate uh, you. Congratulations on Thank your you. win. Thank and you. I'll be looking forward Keep to more. Keep doing what you're doing. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. So that's it, guys. I'll see you next time for Mindset Mondays. Make sure you tune in every Monday on YouTube and iTunes and Spotify and all those places. And I'll see you again soon. Thank you for listening to the Wholesaling Houses Elite Podcast with Max Maxwell. Make sure to tune in next week to see what elite wholesaler will have in the hot seat.